All right, so next thing on the list, we are gonna be doing the 13700K. Now you may be asking, why are we doing the 13700K before the 13900K? Because the supporters wanted it to, and they get to choose whatever content comes first on this channel because they pay the bills. If you missed my 13600K review, go back to the video before this one. The 13600K is by far my favorite CPU of the Raptor Lake generation. That CPU alone with some DDR4 and a cheap motherboard renders the entire AMD lineup already obsolete. So the 13600K was about 8% slower than the 12900K. So let's say you wanted to bump it up to that next tier, you know what I'm saying? That's where the 13700K comes in. Now this video is going to be very interesting because the 13700K is basically the exact same chip as a 12900K, minus the Raptor Lake optimizations. The 12900K and the 13700K have the same P-Core count, E-Core count, and L3 cache size. Now, the only difference between the two is the core, uh, I guess you could say IPC improvements of Raptor Lake, and a little bit more L2 cache. So when I first put this CPU on the test bench, I started doing it off with DDR4. Now, if you go back to my last video where I said that looks like the Raptor Lake memory controller is about one to two bins better than Alder Lake, I was wrong on that. It is pure luck and random. My 13700K only does 4,000 in gear one. And spoiler alert, my 13900K only does 4133. So my... 12900K, my 12th gen one, actually has a better DDR4 memory controller than this i7 and my Raptor Lake i9. So there are no memory controller improvements whatsoever, DDR4 anyway, on Raptor Lake. So then I started doing my benchmarks and then once I got a few of the numbers, I was comparing them with my 12900K numbers with the DDR5 7600, and it was obviously slower, so then I was like, okay, forget this. Be if the memory controller was impressive, like let's say if the memory controller went to like 4266 or 4400, then I would have done those benchmarks, but the fact that it only did 4000, uh, it's not something that would have warranted the time invested to actually benchmark all the games just to show that it was slower, right? So then I had an idea though. Let's take the 13700K, let's put it in my DDR5 motherboard, and let's just try and load the profile. And what do you know? It worked without a hitch. Exact same core speed, ring speed, voltages, timings, memory speed, Everything between these two CPUs was identical. So now this video has kind of been converted into more of a direct Alder Lake versus Raptor Lake IPC test. With the goal being, if a 12900K is at 5.3 gigahertz, 7600, and we take the Raptor Lake CPU and we put it at 5.3 gigahertz and 7600, is this any faster at all in gaming? Was Intel full of shit when they said that this has higher gaming IPC? Let's find out. All right, we're gonna be starting off with Tomb Raider and just as a reminder, both CPUs are at 5.3 gigahertz all cores, 4.9 gigahertz on the ring, and 7600 C34 on the DDR5 ADI memory. So both systems are spec'd exactly the same with the same motherboard, same memory kit, and same 4090 graphics card. So as you can already see here at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K, both CPUs perform identically, all within run-to-run -run variance and margin of error within one to two FPS of each other exactly the same no time to waste here we're going to move straight on to the next game horizon zero dawn and the results are exactly the same once again all within one to two fps variants of each other zero difference between these cpus 
Uh, two for two games so far. Cyberpunk is up next. Now you can see in the 1080p results here that the 13700K did seem to perform a few percent better here in the lows. I'm not too sure why that would be. It also could legit just be run to run variants because we are talking about 5 FPS here, right? So I wouldn't put too much stock into it. The only thing I can think of here is maybe that L2 cache is good for maybe a few FPS bump in this game specifically for some odd reason. But uh, for argument's sake, we're gonna call it functionally the exact same here, and then we're gonna move on. Now, Assassin's Creed Valhalla here next, the 12900K actually had the opposite effect where it was three to four FPS faster than the, than the 13700K, which also does not make any sense whatsoever. But again, you have to just consider this for argument's sake. These are functionally the same. 1% or half a percent is run-to-run -run variance. It is margin of error. So if you see two or three FPS difference, that does not... I know I know. hardware enthusiasts are going to be like, but that, but that two FPS... No, no, no. It's the exact same. It is the exact same. Now, let's go to Riftbreaker CPU AI benchmark next. And, uh, yep, no surprises here. You're definitely seeing a trend. They are exactly the same. So, hopefully, I'm driving this point across home. The top end SKUs of the Intel platforms are all exactly the same when you manually overclock and tune them. All you're really paying for with 13th gen is the higher boost clocks out of the box. Civilization 6, the AI CPU benchmark is next, and yep, once again, exactly the same. I guess you could technically say the 13700K is 1% faster. <laughs> I mean, maybe, but um, yeah, the, the lower the number, the better for this one. Obviously, it's this is the um, how fast the CPU can churn out the AI decisions. And the last game for our chart is Escape from Tarkov, and yeah, again... We are, what, 7 for 7? 8 for 8 now? Games that are exactly the same. Tarkov is no different. This one was also exactly the same. Now, on to Warzone. Just for a second, imagine how many actual benchmarks I had to run uh, today just to see all of these graphs look exactly the same. It's, it's so uh, anticlimactic. All right, Warzone is up next. Now, we actually had some people in the Twitch chat today commenting about how the uh, the 13700K and the 13900K showed up as like 10, 5 to 10 FPS more. Guys, you have to realize that when it comes to Warzone, you can have up to a 10 to 15 FPS variance just from run to run. Just just depending on where the circle is, how many people land there, and the RNG of the gun loot and stuff. Like, you can't... It's not that serious, guys. Come on. Like So if, if, like, you can basically assume these are functionally the same. So you can actually see that on the 12900K on the left, we are inside of the circle. And the 13700K on the right, we are outside of the circle. Because you can see that little white line showing you where to go to get inside the circle. This is what I'm talking about. Like, so when it comes to actual Warzone numbers, and I'm also not going to... I'm not going to drop out of the plane 20 times and try and pick the best one. I don't have time for that shit. You can you can take these numbers however you will, but I'll just let you know that these are exactly the same. But hey, if you want to have some copium and you believe 13th gen is faster for Warzone, I encourage you to use my affiliate links down below. I will link some ADI. I will link some motherboard that you can use, and I will also link the 13700K and 13900k for you to spend your money on help the channel out use those affiliate links also on that note by the time this video goes live the recommended parts list on my website framechasers.org will have been updated with 13th gen parts there's no reason not to buy 13th gen it's, it's the same faster or equal speed for less money so obviously you're gonna want to buy 13th gen but my goal here is to just show 12th gen buyers 
that they do not need to upgrade. There's no FOMO here. If you have a 12 900 k you can skip Raptor Lake altogether. But for those of you buying new, obviously you go buy 13th gen now. It will boost faster out of the clock for you. Less tuning, less screwing around, much more user friendly. So use those affiliate links down below. So the gaming IPC performance between Alder Lake and Raptor Lake? Zero. Now that being said, each CPU does have its pro and con. The 13700K is $220 cheaper than the i9. That's a big chunk of cash for the exact same performance. Now, the pro to the i9 12900K is if you have one of those earlier models, it does support AVX 512. Raptor Lake does not support AVX 512. How is that useful for the end user? Well, I don't test this on my channel, but I have heard that if you are doing PlayStation 3 emulation, RPS3, RPSC3 or whatever, that emulator actually does use AVX 512. So if you ever actually do plan on playing PlayStation 3 emulated games, you might want to go back and try and find a 12900K that has that um, AVX 512 support. But if you never plan on emulating, go ahead and pick this up for $200 cheaper. This CPU is basically just a 12900K price cut, and then the 13900K, you're basically paying $200 for eight more e-cores. So if you don't need them, you pick this thing up. So to summarize, the gaming performance between a 13700K and a 12900K is identical down to the last FPS. They are the exact same chip. This is a rebranded 12900K. In fact, I've been starting to call Raptor Lake rebrand Lake. The 13600K is probably my favorite chip this generation, but the 13700K is probably the best chip this generation. You're getting that i9 level of performance for i7 pricing. And always remember, I don't care what you buy. If you're happy, I'm happy. And if you like the content, hit that subscribe button. Do all that YouTube SEO stuff. Like, share, subscribe. Comment down below what you thought of the i9 versus the i7 today. And I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.